That was from the Adoramus Hymnal, published by Ignatius Press, San Francisco, 1997. From the Easter hymns found in the book from Numbers 410 to 419. And on the accompanying CD set, Disc 3, from the Easter hymns 14 through 23 selection from that. Glory to Jesus Christ. Today is Friday of the octave of Easter, the, still celebrating the solemnity of Easter Day uh, until the night prayer of the Sunday, the Thomas Sunday, which is coming up, the octave of Easter. Also, a Divine Mercy Sunday. But of course, the, since Easter is the highest liturgical celebration and the highest theological celebration, the Easter on Sunday takes precedence over any private devotions or even the liturgical devotions that are subsidiary. But today, we're doing the Stations of the Resurrection, the Via Lucis, the Paschal Way of Life. And in the Magnificat, 
of May, of April rather, April 2021, volume 23, number two, the current a Magnificat. Uh, throughout the other weeks, we'll be using the Stations of the Resurrection from uh, other Magnificats and other sources. So this begins on page 33 in the Magnificat, and it's composed by Father Romanus Cesario, uh, Dominican, with uh, here at, at our seminary in Boston for a good while. The Paschal Way of Light, or the Via Lucis, is a religious practice proper to the post-Easter liturgical period. The features of this devotion resemble the Way of the Cross, or the Via Crucis, and can be prayed individually or with others. And the Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, for us, from 1 Corinthians 5, 7 through 8, Romans 6, 9 through 11, and 1 Corinthians 15, 10, 20, to 22. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is raised from the dead and will never die again. Death no longer has rule over him. The death that he died, he died for sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives for God. So consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man death came, so by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so all in Christ shall also all be made alive. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. And let us greet our Eucharistic Lord, truly present here in the Blessed Sacrament, truly present body, blood, soul, and divinity, with the O salutaris, O saving victim. saving victim open wide the gate of heaven to us below our foes press on from every side your aid supply your strength bestow to your great name be endless praise immortal godhead one in three O oh, grant us endless length of days in our true native land with thee O salutaris ostia, que celi pandis ostium, bella premunt ostilia, da rove fer auxilium, uni trinoque domino, sit sempiterna gloria, qui vitam si ne termino, nobis 
Donat in patria. Amen. The first station, Jesus rises from the dead. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Exodus 3, 6. Meditation. St. Luke affirms baldly, he is not God of the dead, but of the living, and for him all are alive. The resurrection of the Lord grounds the hope for eternal life that Christians enjoy. If for this life only, insists St. Paul, we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. Christ's resurrection gladdens the whole world. Not only does the promise of eternal life dawn on believers, but this joyful mystery brings freedom from sin and death. So the poet sings of Christ, let him Easter in us be a day spring to the dimness of the crimson crested east. From Jerome, Gerard Merley Hopkins, 1875 poem, The Wreck of the Deutschland. Think of Easter as a verb that works in your daily lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, grant me the grace to rejoice always in the resurrection of your Son, who is my Lord forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The second station, the disciples find the empty tomb. Once some people were burying a man, then suddenly they spied such a raiding party. So they cast the dead man into the grave of Elisha, and then everyone went off. But when the man came in contact with the bones of Elisha, he came back to life and rose to his feet. 2 Kings 13.21 meditation. Just as the impulse emotions draw, so the contending emotions such as fear recoil. The fear of death generates the strongest reactions in the human person. By his death, Christ freed those who, through fear of death, had been subject to slavery all their life. Hebrews 2.15. Christ's tomb stands out as a sacrament of redemption. Because of the empty tomb, still venerated by Christians the world over, Christian funerals become exercises in hope. The poet catches the uniqueness of Christian burial spots. Warm laid grave of a womb gray life. While we venerate the empty tomb of Christ, at the same time, we recognize the fullness of new life it represents. Prayer on page 35. Heavenly Father, remove from me all fear of death. Make my only fear the thought of remaining separated from you. Amen. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. Third station. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But when she reached the man of God on the mountain, she grasped his feet. Gehazi came near to push her away, but the man of God said, Let her alone. She is in bitter anguish. 2 Kings 4, 27. 
meditation. Among the scenes of the New Testament that have inspired artists, Nolo, Noli me tangere ranks as one of the most common. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, John 20, 17. When Mary Magdalene spontaneously clings to the risen Christ, she embodies the sentiments of all Christians. Who would not want to remain in close physical contact with Jesus? Elisha raised the Shunammite woman's son by a physical contact. Mary Magdalene announces a new way, wherein, as, as Aquinas sings, visus tactus gustus, in te falitor, said auditu solo tuto creditor. Touch no longer counts, only the faith that comes from hearing. Prayer. Heavenly Father, grant me the grace to assent to your saving truths. Let me join Mary Magdalene, who wept for her sins but who loved the Lord more. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The fourth station. Jesus walks with the disciples to Emmaus. If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I lie down in, in Sheol, you are there too. Psalm 139, 8. Meditation. Appearances deceive. The disciples on the road to Emmaus, we are told, were looking downcast. Luke 24, 17. For his part, Jesus, the as yet unrecognized fellow traveler, turns to the sacred scriptures specifically the Old Testament. God's true word will make the disciples' hearts burn with love. What did he say? The risen Christ interpreted to them what referred to himself in all the scriptures. Luke 24, 27. He began, moreover, with Moses and the prophets. Aquinas again captures the divine pedagogy. In the figures contemplated, t'was with Isaac immolated. By the lamb, t'was antedated. In the manna, it was known. The great events of the Old Testament point to the mysteries of Christ. Prayer. Heavenly Father, give me a love for reading the sacred scriptures. Help me to discover in each page the hidden plan of salvation. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The fifth station. Jesus reveals himself in the breaking of the bread. Food from heaven you gave them in their hunger. Nehemiah 9, 15. Meditation. Emmaus concludes with the Eucharist. These privileged disciples discovered the new sacraments of love. As Aquinas' hymn sings, Lo, or ancient forms departing, newer rites of grace prevail. The sacraments do something. Each sacrament provides a place of encounter with Christ. Like Mary Magdalene in the garden, we meet the risen Christ. Thing that she, there then, the master Ipse, the only one, Christ, king, head. So the poet intones. When properly celebrated and fittingly received, each of the sacraments of the new law both restores and perfects our souls, and in the case of holy anointing, sometimes our bodies.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prayer. Heavenly Father, you gave the people of Israel bread to sustain them on their journey to the promised land. Make me always worthy to receive the bread of life that provides a foretaste of eternal life. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The sixth station. Jesus appears to the disciples. Go and assemble the elders of the Israelites and tell them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob has appeared to me. Exodus 3, 16. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. Meditation. The appearances that Jesus makes after his resurrection occupy a central place in the Christian religion. When Peter seeks a man to take the place of Judas, he establishes the conditions necessary for a twelfth apostle. The candidate must have accompanied the eleven, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us. Matthias was to become, with the other apostles, a witness to Christ's resurrection. As with the tribes of Israel, the number twelve remains sacred. What do we learn? No sin, however great, can trump God's loving designs for our salvation. So the poet bids us remember, no, not uncomforted, lovely, felicitous providence. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prayer. Heavenly Father, increase my confidence in God's plan for my life. Make each day a celebration of your wise and loving providence. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The seventh station. Jesus confers on his disciples the power to forgive sins. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord who said to me, You are my son, today I am your father. Psalm 2, verse 7. Meditation. The grace of the Immaculate Conception belongs to one and one alone. The rest of Adam's progeny must endure the effects of Adam's sin, nature's wounds, disordering punishments. Christian life could not proceed without the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. The risen Christ confides this authority to his church and her priests. Only the man fully configured to Christ can participate in Christ's power to forgive sins. Even after a sacramental confession, a salutary preparation for receiving the Eucharist, Aquinas urges us to pray and ask for what the repentant thief asked. All should make his sentiment their own. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Luke 23, 42. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prayer. Heavenly Father, grant me the grace of penitence. Make me sorry for my sins and move me to seek often sacramental absolution. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The eighth station, Jesus confirms Thomas in faith. I am as dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem. Song of Songs, 1, 5. Meditation. Doubting Thomas reaches the Christian world as an invaluable lesson. Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. 
Christ, of course, approves of Thomas's faith, even if the Lord also proclaims blessed those who have not seen. See John 20, 29. To say that faith pertains to things not seen does not mean that the virtue of faith falls short of reaching reality. The dogmas that we profess in the creed actually unite us with that which abides most real, God and those things that pertain to him. So we sing, I do not see the wounds as Thomas did, but I confess that you are my God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prayer. Heavenly Father, deepen my faith in the saving work of your Son. Make me cling to the mysteries of Christ that ensure my obtaining the reward of eternal life. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The ninth station. Jesus appears to his disciples on the shore of Lake Galilee. What Moses gave to the Gadite clans, with the bank of the Jordan to the southeastern tip of the Sea of Kinnereth, Joshua 13, 24, and 27. Meditation. The Lake of Galilee holds a central place in the geography of the Holy Land. The body of water serves as a territorial boundary and also provides the geographic locale for many of Christ's miracles and encounters. As the poet recalls, it dates from the day of his going to Galilee, after his resurrection. Jesus provides his disciples with a miraculous catch of fish. The gospel reports the exact number. 153. See John 21, 11. Early biblical commentators explained <coughs> that this number represents every kind of fish known to the ancient world. In other words, Christ makes of his apostles fishers of men, that is, of every person who dwells on the planet. <coughs> Alleluia! 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 Prayer. Heavenly Father, you provide for everything one needs to sustain body and soul. Grant that I will always rejoice in making your saving presence known to the people of the world. Amen. Alleluia! 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 Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The tenth station. Jesus confers primacy on Peter. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Isaiah 22, 21. Meditation. At the center of the communion of the church stands the Bishop of Rome. The position of the Pope in Christian life arises from Christ's commission to Peter, feed my sheep, John 21, 17. Without this visible center of unity, the church would not flourish as a loose-knit confederation of regional religious bodies. Without Peter, the church would crumble into eventually unrecognizable factions. Christians place a premium on their maintaining ecclesial unity gathered around the Sea of Rome, the Simon Peter of a soul. Why? The answer comes easily. The church readies us for heaven. There no one can resist the principle of unity, where God abides all in all. 1 Corinthians 15.28 Alleluia! 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 Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the grace of the Petrine office. Keep me loyal to the Holy Father and faithful to the truths he teaches. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The truth he teaches. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The eleventh station. Jesus entrusts his disciples with the universal mission. I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Genesis 22, 17. Meditation. God's plan of salvation remains the same for all peoples and nations. The church serves as a sacrament for the unity of the human race. Just as we confess God as the one creator of heaven and earth, so also we proclaim that the same God stands as the final end and completion of all that exists. Apologists like to point out that when one considers the human frailties of Christ's initial disciples and their relatively small number, the expansion of the church throughout the world testifies to the divine action that moved the disciples. To flash from the flame to the flame then, tower from the grace to the grace. No wonder exultation at Christ's resurrection erupts all around the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Prayer on page 41. Heavenly Father, thank you for drawing me into the community of the church. Give me the grace to take my part in furthering her universal mission. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The twelfth station. Jesus ascends into heaven. As they walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Second Kings 2.11 Meditation Bede the Venerable, who died in 735, composed these lines for the Ascension Feast. The Apostles, then standing on the mystic mountain of chrismation with the glorious virgin mother saw the glory of Jesus and with gladsome light they watched him as he sought the stars and with the ears of their joyful hearts knew that the king of the world was taken up no wonder many saints find in the ascension their favorite mystery of Christ's life in a certain sense Christ was owed this compensation for the bitter sufferings that he had endured. For our part, we find our faith strengthened, our hope renewed, and our charity inflamed. Why? Christ assures us that we are not left orphans. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prayer. Heavenly Father, make us rejoice in the ascension of the Lord. We believe that where the king of the world is, there also we hope to find ourselves. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The 13th station. Mary and the disciples await the coming of the Holy Spirit. I will give them a new heart and put a new spirit within them, thus they shall be my people. Ezekiel 11, 19 and 20. Meditation. The poet captures the mystery of the cynical, the heaven-flung, heart-fleshed, maiden-furled miracle in Mary of Flame, she who bore the double-natured child, and accompanied him throughout his time on earth, understands better than any other the love that Christ bears for his people. 
Mary knows with certitude that her son will not leave his people orphans. The Christian life cannot proceed far without the miracle in Mary. What is this miracle? Her maternal mediation. Our Blessed Lady looks after each of us with the mother's love. The piety of yesteryear rightly sang how dark without Mary's life's journey would be from bring flowers to the, of the rarest. Dark indeed, Mary's flame always illumines her son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prayer on page 43. Heavenly Father, instill in me a tender love for the Virgin Mother of your Son. Let nothing keep me from seeking refuge under her blue mantle, where all saints find their shelter and safeguard. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The glory to your resurrection, O Christ. The 14th station. Jesus sends the spirit promised by the Father to his disciples. I put my spirit in you that you may live. Ezekiel 37, 14. Meditation. The Holy Spirit comes in the form of tongues of fire. Our hearts, charities, hearts, fire. Our thoughts, chivalries, throngs, Lord. So the poet describes it. Fire illumines. The Holy Spirit teaches us everything that we need to know in order to attain salvation. His teaching comes always adapted perfectly to our needs. Fire warms. The Holy Spirit consoles us. He is comforter the best. This comforting arises from our conviction that God loves us. Sometimes the warmth is felt, whereas at other times we must rest content with the knowledge that God loves us. Finally, fire destroys. The Holy Spirit destroys in us whatever does not come from God. No wonder the church rejoices at Pentecost. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Make me always attentive to his promptings and grateful for his consolations. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of the Apostle Peter, from the third chapter, beginning with the 18th verse, to the fourth chapter, ending with the 11th verse. The reason why Christ died for sins once for all, the just man for the sake of the unjust, was that he might lead you to God. He was put to death insofar as fleshly existence goes but was given life in the realm of the Spirit. It was in the Spirit that he went to preach to the spirits in prison. They had disobeyed as long ago as Noah's day, while God patiently waited until the ark was built. At that time, a few persons, eight in all, escaped in the ark through the water. You are now saved by a baptismal bath, which corresponds to this exactly. This baptism is no removal of physical stain, but the pledge to God of an irreproachable conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He went to heaven and is at God's right hand, with angelic rulers and powers subjected to him. Christ suffered in the flesh. Therefore, arm yourselves with this say, his same mentality. He who has suffered in the flesh has broken with sin, 
You are not to spend what remains of your earthly life on human desires, but on the will of God. Already you have devoted enough time to what the pagans enjoy, living lives of debauchery, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and wanton idolatry. It is no wonder that the, those blasphemers are surprised when you do not plunge into the same swamp of profligacy as they. They shall give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. The reason the gospel was preached even to the dead was that, although condemned in the flesh in the eyes of men, they might live in the spirit in the eyes of God. The consummation of all is close at hand. Therefore, do not be perturbed. Remain calm so that you will be able to pray. Above all, let your love for one another be constant, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be mutually hospitable without complaining. As generous distributors of God's manifold grace, put your gifts at the service of one another, each in the measure he has received. The one who speaks is to deliver God's message. The one who serves is to do it with the strength provided by God. Thus in all of you, God is to be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him be glory and dominion throughout the ages. Amen. You are saved by your baptismal bath, which corresponds to this exactly, to what the image that he gives as the foreshadowing of regeneration in Christ is the flood of Noah. They had disobeyed as long ago as Noah's day, while God patiently waited until the ark was built. At that time, a few persons, eight and all, escaped in the ark through the water. So the water is the foreshadowing of this. This is the story of Noah and the when I always found the horrific cruelty of of God in this in drowning everybody men women and children animals all this stuff except the ones that were kept in the ark for uh, for as to be the seed of a new thing that uh, that struck me as ho horrific even as a little child I remember seeing a painting one time and it was the uh, uh, the ark was going by. There were people, uh, including a woman with a child. I think it was, was it Raphael. Uh, there, the child was was dying. They were up on this uh, rock, but the ark just went by, and someone was waving to get the attention, and they then they would drown. But the spiritual meaning has always meant a great deal to me just as it did for St. Paul in, in thinking of that. The same thing with the crossing of the Red Sea, although I didn't really have that much sympathy for the Egyptians pursuing them, especially watching it in the, the DeMille Ten Commandments. But God is actually full of compassion, full of goodness. And so we see, we take this allegorically, as baptismal regeneration. For as, as Peter tells us here, you are now saved by a baptismal bath, which corresponds to this exactly. This baptism is no removal of physical stain, so it's not just some outer sign that doesn't really mean anything, or even just a sign that means something, but it's just totally subjective. No, there's a reality here, a reality of grace, the transformation that comes in baptism. So are we then to say, oh, well, I got my ticket punched, I got washed, clean. it's always going to affect, I don't have to live this. No, we have to renew our baptism every day. And not by our power, but by the power of that baptismal grace, the power that we're celebrating at this time, the saving incarnation, death, and resurrection of Christ which 
was the first fruits of the resurrection, the general resurrection. We'll all be resurrected, the good and the evil. But what direction will I be going in the resurrection? With the evil or with the good? With those who have died in grace or those who have spurned grace? And who will continue to, uh, who, who will, in a sense, gladly reject God and, and, and embrace the reality of hell rather than submit to, to God. And then there they uh, fight each other everlastingly. Which way am I going? I am I am resolved to live in this baptismal grace. I'm resolved to grow in faith and hope and especially love. Yes, even love, even kindness for those who have no intention of turning, giving it back. But even those who wish my harm. Although the kindness will often be a prophetic one of a tough love. So this baptism is no removal of a physical stain, but the pledge to God of an irreproachable conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we have to live this. If you're going to have an irreproachable conscience, we have to be living in the grace of Christ. We have to have uh, things that are really nailed to the cross, not some sort of uh, coding over and self-delusion. Through what? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Jesus, he, Peter reminds us, Christ suffered in the flesh, that is, he suffered in his human nature, in his human body especially. And also he took on himself the anguish of the whole human race, which he only, he could do being God incarnate, in that distinct human nature, distinct from the divine nature, but one in a paradoxical way, but in a marvelous way. So, he said, he who has suffered in the flesh has broken with sin. So, in the baptism, the imagery of baptism, of St. Paul's image of, of uh, drowning your sins, being, uh, be, being uh, dead with Christ, dying with Christ, and rising with Christ, rising to the new life, the life of virtue, which is in this mortal life still a struggle and maybe more of a struggle than before. As we uh, see the, the reality of sin more and more clearly. So he's reminded, you are not to spend what remains of your life on human desires, the, on, on the, the carnality, on the greed, on uh, the pursuit of power. And yes, even pursuit of power in the church. All of these things. The contempt for human life, which is, is so common now. Especially human life at the beginning and human life at the end. The ones at the end can't go quick enough. And the ones at the beginning uh, also can't be exterminated quick, quick, more quickly. Although some want them a little, to grow more so they can harvest their organs. Well, we're living in a world of that's quite seductive in this. Because it tells you, this is the way, this is the way of, uh, you are going to be the captain of your ship. Well, in reality, that isn't the case. If I'm going to be the center, make myself the center, it's really the devil that's going to be the, the captain of my ship. And it's not going to be the love boat. It's going to be a, a disaster. So the, uh, and the irony of that, uh, instead of agape love, the unselfish love, they, uh, they, uh, all the, the loves that God has created to bring us together, to make us united, to bring about the human race and nurture the human race, 
are not used for the opposite, just for one's own pleasure and exploitation. But this is nothing new. Has this not always been? And so he, he is referring to things that sound like right today, but it was also the reality then. Already you have devoted enough time to what the pagans enjoy, living lives of debauchery, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and wanton idolatry. Now, for the most part, we're not tempted to the a classical idolatry of thinking a god is in, in this uh, statue and that this god is uh, as bad as I am, or worse, in many ways. No, the idolatry now is of money, adoring money, or what money brings. Power, again, greed, all of these things, all of these idols set up. Indeed, anything that's even good, if it's there pushing God to the side on the throne, or even pushing him off completely, which in the reality of mortal sin is what happens. So... And it says, it is no wonder that these blasphemies are surprised that you do not plunge into the same swamp of profligacy as they. So, and, and many, many do. You know, many people say, well, oh, I can have Christ and I can espouse abortion. I can have Christ and I can uh, be uh, given in completely to the greed of, of, of the corporate reality or of my own. But that isn't the case. Mortal sin and grace cannot coexist. And so, he said, they shall give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. The reason the gospel was preached even to the dead. So this is, it seems clear to me anyway, that this is purgatory. That he's going there where these people were. And uh, he makes a strong thing about the the people who went in the you know from the, in the first flood there the these people there they're preaching to the dead and if he's just uh, and if this is hell it makes absolutely no sense to preach preach the message of salvation to them it, it's absurd it doesn't make any sense at all it's counterproductive count, count but purgatory yes they they're waiting outside the gates of heaven, this image, uh, if you prefer, that, but, uh, that he gives, the gospel was preached even to the dead. The, and the reason was that, although condemned in the flesh in the eyes of men, because they died and went through all this stuff, they might live in the spirit in the eyes of God. So if this is hell, this is completely absurd. They might live in the spirit of the eyes of God, which is not the case in hell. So may we turn to the Lord in all of these things. Above all, he says, let your love for one another be constant, for love covers a multitude of sins. And, not, and it doesn't just cover them. Real, authentic, agape love, that unselfish love, roots it out because it cannot abide these sins, especially grave ones. And as generous distributors of God's manifold grace, we to be channels of grace to all around us. Put your gifts at the service of one another. The spiritual gifts especially. The, there's always the, the, the irony of those getting spiritual gifts when the temptation is to say, well, why didn't I get that one? Why didn't I get uh, Padre Piero's uh, uh, miracle, miracle doing. Why didn't I get his uh, his uh, uh, prophecy gifts? Why didn't I get his clairvoyance and all this other stuff? Well, Padre Pio really suffered. You want that? Hmm? Well, no, we should be rejoicing that other people have greater gifts than we do. That other people can sing better than we can. I'm sorry that you're subjected to my voice, but there's nobody else at this point here, uh, th that that other people are doing better, even spiritually, rather than to fall into envy, but rather have the, the loving jealousy 
the, the zealousness saying, uh, I can I can do what God wants me to do in this, whatever that is. And to be this channel of God's grace, whether a distributor of God's manifold grace. As he said, the one who speaks is to deliver God's message. The one who serves is to do it with the strength provided by God. Thus, in all of you, God is to be glorified through Jesus Christ. The Father glorified through Jesus Christ to the power of the Holy Spirit. Not me, not you, not uh, uh, the people who are celebrities in church or state or, or uh, the, the, the media and Hollywood and all this stuff. No. God is to be glorified. To him be glory and dominion throughout the ages. Amen. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. So now let us prepare to receive our Lord's Eucharistic blessing. Sing the Tantum Ergo. Down in adoration falling, this great sacrament we hail. Over ancient forms of worship, newer rites of grace prevail. Faith will tell us Christ is present when our human senses fail. To the everlasting Father and the Son who made us free, and the Spirit God proceeding. From them each eternally be salvation, honor, blessing, might, and endless majesty. Tantum ergo sacramentum, venere mocernui, et antiquum documentum, novo cedat ritui, praised et fide supplementum, sensum defectui, genitori genitoque, laus et jubilatio. Salus honor virtus quoque, sit at benedictio, procedenti abu troque, compas it laudatio. Amen. You have given them bread from heaven, having within it all sweetness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom. You live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee all. On earth thy scepter claim, all in heaven above adore thee, in the net thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign, in the net thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Oh.
Hark, the loud celestial hymn, angel choirs above are raising cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus raising fill the heavens with sweet accord holy 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 lord fill the heavens with sweet accord holy 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 lord Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's see who's waving today. Kate O'Neill, Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Barbara Reedy, Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Joe O'Brien, Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Eunice Ediabonia. Christ is risen, he is truly risen. Patty Mack, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. Judy Hardigan, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. Father Paul Ring, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. Leslie Sinclair, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. Linda Brasher, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. <laughs> 